just won the most outstanding Canadian. Like three days later, I roll up in the bank uh, with my resume. And actually, I started a little bidding war. There's like a three branch little uh, bidding war and who can call me back, who can hire me the fastest. <laughs> and so it turns out it was a, it was a market mall branch here. And uh, honestly, like I, I enjoyed my time. They started me off as a teller. And, and you, you know a teller, you got plenty of people standing in line, you, you help out your, the people come in, your customers. Um, but the problem was, was like, I could play a football game and then go to work. So if I did well in the football game, it's like, you know, you, you look just like that guy on, on the newspaper or whatever, right? Yeah. One time a guy comes in, he's like, you know, I, you, you look like a football player. And then there's another guy in line wearing a number nine, a Cornish jersey. Yeah. And says, no, 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 that is John Cornish. <laughs> That's so, so funny. How, are you, how are you feeling in that moment? What were you thinking? <laughs> uh, you know, I, I was just thinking that I, I did the right thing. Yeah. I mean, it was starting to work at that point in time. And honestly, I made some, like, as much as I say, you know, as an athlete, you can network and those kinds of things. I didn't really make any traction until I started becoming a normal person, mm -hmm. right? Um, as an uh, employee at the bank, I had a job. If not playing sports, I had a job. Mm -hmm. And that allowed me to make a lot of contact with people just I'm meeting, both at TV, in the banking world, and then started making my contacts sort of outside and building my network outside. So it wasn't really until I started working for the bank that I really started cultivating a network here in Calgary. Yeah. And then it was, a, it was an amazing experience for me um, because, like, honestly, I, I think a lot of people expected me to just quit. Like, I didn't need to work. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it's sort of having that perseverance and just sticking with it. Like sometimes you have football practice till 1.30 and then you show up at work from 2 to 8. Wow. It was just part of the deal, wow. right? Uh, because, you know, you, you think long term yeah. and hopefully it doesn't interfere with your more near term uh, goals. Yeah. So how, how were you able to balance both and be, be effective in both? And also, did you find that working throughout your football career made um, retirement an easier process for you? Well, yeah, retirement was a joke. But uh, I would say overall, football helped me um, sort of become a better worker. Mm -hmm. And then when I went into the banking environment, I saw how you had to work with teammates that weren't necessarily a guy hitting another guy beside you. Um, and then I actually took that back to football. Um, so 2013, after I'd been working at the bank for a little bit, ended up being my statistically, um, or like in terms of yardage gain, my best year. Um, so I think that it helped me sort of gain that focus, the level of understanding that you need um, to, to one, be a good student of the game, and, and another to be like, what am I doing? I'm showing up for work. How have I prepared to show up for work? So it gave me what, what I call prep time, just always being prepared for what's next. Yeah. And that, uh, that in turn uh, allowed me to be really well positioned on, in terms of retirement because retirement basically looked like for me, I was working at the bank. Um, should I retire? Yeah, let's, let's retire. I call up my bank, tell them I'm going to retire. It's okay, John, we got a job for you. Cool. I tell the, uh, uh, the Stampeders I'm going to retire. They're like, cool. We sort of knew this was happening, John, but okay, that, that's cool. I have my retirement press conference and I show up at TD Wealth. So a promotion the following day. Wow. So it was, it was, it was pretty, it was a little bit of a shock. You have your retirement press conference, newspapers across the country talking about your retirement. And then the following day you're taking staples out of pieces of paper. Yeah. Right. So, so it was, it was a little bit humbling, yeah. but it, it allowed me to have a level of consistency with my life that like nothing changed. Yeah. It, it was weird. Nothing changed in my life at retirement. Wow, that's amazing. I mean, you've definitely defeated the myth that all football players are jocks. Cause <laughs> you, definitely, you definitely got both the brains and the athleticism. I appreciate um, that. But yeah, so what else are you up to um, outside of football? Because I know you have a couple yeah. of things going on. Um, yeah, so, so yeah, we, uh, like my wife and I attended a lot of different events over time, and we started realizing there was no black people at the events we went to. Um, uh, we, we both thought there was something wrong with that. Um, we, we didn't know why. Um, so we started sort of talking to the community, seeing, see, reaching out what's, what's going on business wise for black people in Calgary. And we found that there was no sort of central location. If you want to do business with a black person, there was no place you could go in Calgary other than like a cultural association. Yeah. So we, we thought we could do something about that because there's a lot of different chambers of commerce. Um, we, we thought we could build our own uh, chambers. 
So we, we, we uh, got together a few people and we put together what's called now the Calgary Black Chambers. Now we're a registered society in Alberta. Uh, we were currently working on getting uh, basically funds to students who are in desperate state straits. As it stands right now with coronavirus, you have many students who have to pay rent. They've lost their job. Um, eventually they're gonna have to pay for school. Um, how are they gonna come up with that money? So within our group, we have about 130 or so members. We were able to fundraise. We put together a, a, a packages now for, for students in need. So focusing primarily on international students because a lot of students here have family and whatnot. But we're, we're working to help uh, the students that get in contact with us uh, to just aid them along their journey, help them pay for food and whatnot. 